the comparison between for profit and not for profit, and and and, and almost the thought of comparing them got touchy at, at times. And I, I think we heard John make one of the more compelling arguments we've heard. The core the comment was something to the effect of. Um, it's more people intensive, and and the fact that you can't monetize some intellectual property and various other tangible and intangible assets are there. But I, I wanted to sort of open that same question up to, to the, whoever wanted to contribute to. What, how do you feel about the analogies when you, when you between um, capital when it comes to for profit and not for profit, and even strategies and how you can think of a dollar? I'm going to move one comment, and on not on the meat and potatoes, and also not on broad philosophical things like expressive giving and the need for nonprofits to create space for people to express their views and all that stuff. I would say that part of the reluctance is that, that many business people, based largely on misunderstanding, immediately push the analogy too far. And the place that they push it too far the most often is, I think, the fundamental misunderstanding that you know the funders, the equity owner, the, the equity providers to companies own them. The boards have in most cases, other than in very special situations, an unambiguous duty of care to those funders to effectively <coughs> manage management so that the funders' are, um, interests are served. And that's just absolutely, completely the wrong legal framework in this country for not-for-profit organizations. Funders do not own, in any sense of the word, not-for-profits. Boards don't serve funders in their role as owners contra management. It's just wrong. Um, and obviously people within the nonprofit world understand that, but I think many, many funders don't. And, and that's the place where I just think you need to, to remember that it's much more complicated than that and hard to generalize and every every nonprofit's gonna be gonna be different. Where I where I would say on the other side is that that the need for efficiency and hard-mindedness should be greater in the nonprofit world than in the for-profit world. I mean, if all we're doing is making toothpaste, you know, whether the shareholders get 15 cents a share in dividends or 14, I mean, sure, it matters, but come on, it doesn't really matter. Whereas in an area of scarce, in an environment of scarce resources, much as it's countercultural, it's absolutely imperative, as, as Iris said, that everybody think really hard about whether their program's working and. And, and whether it's not working, and if they learn something tough as it may be to get it out there, because you know there's scarce resources and these are urgent, urgent problems. So I, I would say again, just to sort of cut through it, we shouldn't pretend that the nonprofit world should be less focused than the for-profit world. Just the opposite. But we also should remember that money plays a very different role legally, even legally, before you get into culturally in the nonprofit world than it does in the for-profit world. And that's just the environment we live in. Sorry. No, I mean, my point was just that, you know, at the end of the day, a nonprofit organization is providing a service and their, you know, constituents and their mission may be different. They don't have, they're not going after profit, but at the end of the day, you're still running a business that's providing a service, at, you know, that's providing a service. Where it gets irrational is that, you know, the person who's receiving the service is not paying for the service. So there's no direct connection to you know, getting getting that performance to that provider through money, <laughs> so it, it it just you know it just makes it much more complex. And um, but you know I'm not put off by the metaphor at all because you still have to you still have to run a good business. So. I mean, I in John's point, we feel that every I think fun funders in general have a disproportionate influence when we really think about it. Not the good funders, but there are plenty of funders that are influencing things far more than they should. When you think about who the organization belongs to um, and who they're serving, I I just think I mean there's, it's never black or white, right? But my personal belief is that at this point, the nonprofit sector could benefit much more from infusing private sector practices that apply than not. Like we're so far not where we could be in terms of best practices, um, in terms of goal orientation, efficiency, discipline, alignment, like all that stuff that will free us up to be do more of the mission stuff, you know. And right now the inefficiencies are actually holding us back a lot. And and I that said, I also think the nonprofit sector has historically been doing a lot of cool stuff that the private sector could benefit from. I think what I've learned in my jobs in both the private and nonprofit sectors that the passion, passion for example, leading through passion and when people are inspired, it brings out 50% greater performance, even in a private sector operation. So 
I actually think the wards are merging. I think it's great. I don't think private sector will become more. Like, I think I don't think private sectors will start looking like nonprofits the way nonprofits will start looking like businesses. But I do think even for profits are beginning to understand that employees are demanding, for example, more than just the paycheck as being their main satisfaction, and they're realizing that they have to create more of an impact opportunity. And it doesn't have to be a nonprofit mission, but it does need to be a feeling of impact that, that an individual employee is having. So. I, I'm, all, I'm never reluctant to talk about this stuff. I think we've got to talk about it more. I think that's where a lot of the upside is for nonprofits.